All right, so I've uh, got an art tip for you, folks. Going to do this a uh, little bit of art tip going on here. Joining me to do that will be Brandon. Say hi, Brandon. Hello. Excellent. <sighs> I just did a couple podcasts. I'm a little, a little wonky. Um, I want to talk to you all about setting up lines arts for like a cell shade coloring thing. Um, believe it or not, I've been getting some questions about this recently. Uh, from about three different people, which is a lot for Sketchcraft. It's a lot for us over here. Um, <laughs> one was like how to set up the lines to do like that animated look so that the lines are colored, right? Um, and then two, will I be doing more of that look? Uh, apparently someone sent me a, a Facebook. I don't recognize the name. They're new. It was pretty interesting. They were like, uh, basically, Rob, I don't want to tell you how to do your art, you know, but since you kind of draw like an animated style, would you be willing to do more art like in a cell shade, like a two step or a three step? <laughs> Which I found funny considering what's coming up, right, with the X Men stuff and then right. the game cave. And I'm like, oh, I'm moving that way. Matter of fact, I'd have had a lot more cell shaded shit in my portfolio if and I didn't have this thing like called the job. Right. Where no one would pay me to do that. Like, <laughs> oh, no, never. <laughs> they won't, right? Unless you're like, and I'm gonna, I was butchering it, but Phil Burasa working at Warner Brothers, you know, where that's all they pump out is the DC animated. Yeah, but like in comics, it just doesn't happen. Right, dude. it doesn't happen, no. Right, so, uh, but for me, yeah, you're going to be getting more of it because one, I love it. Two, it's faster. Mm-hmm. Three, I love it. It's basically, yeah, I like animation. So you're going to be getting more of that for me. I'll be honest, Brennan, I may not do a lot more rendered shit unless it's like the Casey Jones thing. Uh-huh. Um, just because I like that cell shaded look, and I'm getting that rendered look when I do Copics. Right. You know what I mean? So when I, I found that when I do the fully rendered Photoshop thing, um, and I do the Copics, people don't, for some reason, they can't see the difference. I don't want to trail off on that. Uh, anyhow, you want to know how to set up fucking line arts? Here we go, folks. So let me open up the... And that's kind of what you've been helping me with, right? Is a more of a, a cell shaded look where it's kind of the 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 three tones kind of thing. Where yeah, sort I, of, I... but we're going to talk about digital right now. Oh, okay. So okay. this is a piece of art from Game Cave um, pending. This probably won't be in the final issue because I'm changing her design again. <laughs> but the, all the art in Game Cave will be cell shaded. And what this looks like is this. This is the actual lines. I drew it traditionally, scan it in, and trace it digitally. This is what I was telling you about, Brandon, when I was like, oh, I don't uh -huh. know about just tracing my lines will work faster, you know? So the results are pretty good, actually. Um, now, what you need to do is take these lines and separate them from the white. How you do that is I already have an action script set up to automatically do that. Um, what you To do it on your own, you can do it, set up an action script. But what you do is you go to Channels. There's a little Channels window. You go to Window, Channels. And when you're in there, make sure the image is flattened. Select this little circle with these dotted lines. It's going to select all the white in the image. Once you do select all the white, you need to inverse that. Select, inverse. So it selects the black. See how that works, Brandon? Uh-huh. If so if you select all the white, you invert the selection. It's just going to select the line arts. And then just, just go ahead and create a new layer. And uh, shift F5, which you can fill and you can select black. Click OK. And then deselect. And then if we come down here, make a new layer, and fill that with white, just so it's separated. Now the line arts are completely separated. See? I like to do this thing called trap fill. That's where you hit, uh, is it control shift backspace? Let me see. Yeah, it's control shift backspace will fill with the background color. So I have it set to black. I can do control shift backspace and just make sure that all the pixels are a trap of black. Um, if you don't understand that, folks, don't worry about it. Okay. Now, now what I do there is once I have the line arts, I like to set it to this red color. See this red? I'm going to mm -hmm. enlarge it really big, folks, so you can see it. And we're going to come over here, and this is the code 944760. This is what I use. This is color red for everything. And then I take the lines. Let me try to set this to normal. Here's what they look like over the flats, the basic colors. The colors are just basically flat colors. Let me turn all the shading off here. Turn all this stuff off. And so the, you drop the red right on there. There's the lines. And you're like, well, Rob, 
I don't know, man. That doesn't quite do it. Well, what you do is set it to overlay, which gets you... See what happens when you do that? You get this, like, cool yellow. The uh, yellow turns this bright yellow. The purple turns this pink. The black lines get darker, so forth and so forth. And that's from the overlay? That's from the overlay. Then what we're going to do is duplicate that. You can hit Control j or just drag this down to this little tab here. This Then you can duplicate that and set it to multiply. And I'm going to turn it down to 60%. And that difference means that you get... It's not all glowy, right? It actually controls the coloration, so you can actually see the lines again. You could turn it down to 40%, maybe turn it up to 100 depending on how you like it. I like to leave it right at 40 Now, the problem with this is we're not done yet. Um, if you look, the eyes aren't black, right? Uh, sorry, I hit the... The eyes aren't black. One second, folks. I need to go to my Wacom settings and reset that. So Wacom has this nice little glitch or wants to forget you ever have a Wacom. So right. you set your settings, you replace it, and say restore successful. I think, and I it think works most... just fine. It works just yeah. fine now. So, so, okay, here we go. So how do you fix this? It's really simple. Okay, it doesn't want to work while I'm in here. So, let me set that back to 60. I have to close Photoshop out. Anytime you reset your Wacom settings, you have to reset Photoshop too. Okay, how do you get this fixed? The really easy way to do it is just go ahead and control cl uh, click your lines, right? And then create a new layer underneath. And then if we hit control H to hide it, we're still selecting just the lines. Then you can come in here with black and fill in the areas that you want filled with black, like the lines would be good, or the little eyes, you know? So this can be, I gotta use the mouse here because I don't want to restart Photoshop. See, that's how you work. That, and then we can come over here. Now, if you look, the, let's zoom in here. The flats don't completely cover every little seam on the lines, right? That's gonna be normal, folks. The easiest way to fix that is just select the color that you want, and then come right under here and just draw in that little line that you're selecting. So you can get that color. And then you select that, and you come right over here, and you fix that, and come here and fix that. And so you can see the skin here. We select the skin tone, and we can get rid of that red. On the yellow, we select the hair, and we get rid of that. And you just gotta spend about 15, 20 minutes going over the whole image and making sure you don't get any of these halos. Basically, I call them halos. It's really not hard. And remember, we're still selecting the lines. I'm just hidden, hidden that. And this is a whole lot easier than going over every little line manually and tracing every little fucking thing. You know? And oh, trying yeah. to select a bunch of colors. The gray will look like this. The brew, you know, the yellow will look like you don't have to think about it. Photoshop already did the color selection for you. And I'm not even so I'm not even making this look brown. I'm just selecting the flat color. Because remember, the overlays and the multiplier are doing the color generation for me. And you just come across the whole image. Yeah, you put on one Daft Punk song and you're pretty much done. You know? So, And when you get done, you end up with this. I've already pre-done it. You end it up. And you can see if I turn this layer on and off, you can see the difference. See here, each little seam line is filled in, the handle is filled in, you can see here on the glove parts of her skin were showing through and it's all fixed and then after I get done with that I add one level of shade, it's this purple light I select control new, paste, it's this dark purple right here just screen cap this folks I fill that uh, with a hard light at 20%, depending on how I want it to look. I like to just make them not completely glowy, you know? Um, if it was like a time, warm time of day, I change the color blue, whatever. It depends on the time of day. But then I do one level of shade here. This is setting up a color with using color burn with the same purple. And then using the same red as her lines, I add a new hard light layer. And I use a hard light layer just for the skins. 
and that gives that skin that pink coloration. And even on, you know, an African American style character, it's the same thing. So you can see on Truffles here, she has that same, it's the same, same color tone. And then I go in here and paint manually paint in highlights. I fill the whole thing with a light yellow, her whole flat, and then I paint in little edge lights using a soft light layer. And that gives me that those little rim lights. And if it were nighttime, instead of yellow, that would be like a light green or a light blue. And then you can add some glows if you want, whatever. And let's go underneath really quick, turn on her eyes. That's that. And that's a pretty easy way to do cell shading. And that's why I was telling Brandon, in a year or so, I'll train him how to do that. Because I, I know once you get it down with Copics, it's not going to be hard. Because it's a, just a lot of repetitive stuff, you know? So really, the majority of the coloring is being done in your flats, you know? And you don't have to figure out all the, the lines. I'll tell you this is what the flats look like. See? And they're never, see these little seams? You're going to get some of this shit sometimes. Like, Brandon's better at it than me. I had to do this, and I do a shitty job. So I hold Brandon to a standard. Right? So, but even when you do that, Brandon, it's like, you would do this, that yellow may not completely line up under the line because it's going under the line art, you know? Mm -hmm. So at some point, you're going to get those halos edges, which is why you have to manually paint the flat color, you know, within those line spaces to make sure they're all perfect. And that's the easiest way to do it, folks. Like, I'm telling you, it's super simple. You have any questions, Brandon? Um, not really. I mean, I noticed some of your the cell chain has like a real a soft look to it, and not so much like the harder. No, it's 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 a crisp edge, dude. Maybe I'm just looking at things like the the hair and stuff, but no, it's a crisp edge. What you're seeing is this like, um, like this. That's airbrushed right there. That's those pink little bits are airbrushed, but this is uh, okay. all. This is all a hard edge, man. Gotcha. No, there's no soft edges here. So if you wanted soft edges, you could come check this out. Uh -huh. So you can come right here and say like the skin tones inside. I paint my mask, so I fill the whole thing with red, and then I paint in the mask. If you took the mask, and you're selecting the mask right here, it's got a little white outline. You can go filter blur, Gaussian blur. You could blur the edge. If you want that Disney airbrush thing, right? I like I like the hard edge either more so. Right. So, no, it's it is the, the, this right here. This little pink bit in her hair is mm -hmm. airbrushed in because I oh. why would you make that hard? You know, that didn't make any right. sense. Right. Well, so sometimes I guess because I'm I'm new to a lot of the 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 color and stuff. Is when I hear cell shaded, I thought every every color transition had to be like a hard edge. You know. But it looks better, obviously, with hair and stuff that you want to do it softer and blended. No, and sometimes they do do, like, if you do do, they uh, <laughs> do, uh, if we select, like, her entirely, right? Um, if this were, like, she was being, they say it was, like, sunset, right? Mm -hmm. You could come in here and let's say, let's pick this. I mean, did that make sense, what I was saying there? See, like, you could let me take this, put that above all the glows. Like, you could add a gradient and turn the gradient down if she was being lit by, like, a time of day. See? So mm -hmm. you get a whole gradient across her body, and that works in animation, too. And the reason why is time. You can't gradient the whole fucking piece by piece by piece, but the whole right. character, they could, you know? I would recommend doing that, like, if you're working it into, like, a background. This background is weird. It's just a piece of paper. So, um, which I won't be using this from the final issue. But that being said, case in point, like, Cacho, he's a hard edge right here. But this right here, this green, is just a gradient. This green to that green, you know? Mm -hmm. Because that looks smoother, right? So usually in animation, there might be one gradient covering the character. If you want to see an example of this, Brother Bear on Disney does that a lot. And anime, they do it all the time. So they do that all the time. Same basic setup. Do you have any uh, inspiration that you look for? In cell like, is there any, like cell shaded art that you really like like uh i know in the past you told me you like the zelda wind waker hd yeah i like that um i also like what Ankama does like the wakfu uh i like 
various levels of Disney. Like I like the lighting, the way the characters are lit to the backgrounds and Brother Bear look fantastic. Um, I like the cell shading in Atlantis from Disney, the Atlantis film. I actually really like that a lot in the color palettes. Um, I also really like like Full Metal Alchemist a lot um, for a more mature look, you know. But if you want something really colorful and poppy, I like anything on Commodus, like Wakfu, Delphus. They're fantastic. Treasures of Carib is an animation that's fantastic. I love that. That's really simple, but it looks really good. So, yeah. That'd be some random. Yeah. I mean, I I don't like, I don't watch a lot of the, I watch some of the stuff you watch, but the things I see with the Shell Shader, like, like I was saying, like the DC animated movies that I know you don't care for, but. No, I don't watch those. Yeah, but when I, I think of Cell Shaded, that's what I know. I think of. You know, you got the, the main color and then the darker yeah. and such. But yeah, I don't, I don't like a lot of those. <laughs> I like the. Uh, remember that one we were looking at, the Asian one. There was a Batman short they did where he was in China. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah! Batman Gotham, uh, Gotham. No, not Gotham Knight. That's not like Gotham, but uh, I know, I know. There was one right? that was animated where it was all like a Chinese setting. Right. That I thought was fantastic. Brilliant. I actually like the animation in Gotham Knights, but that's an anime, so. <laughs> Any Miyazaki film. I like Japanese animation more than American. Uh, the, the last great American. Like, I like Samurai Jack a lot. The original Batman animated series and even the new adventures. I really like the new adventures when they simplified the characters. I thought that right. looked really, really cool. Uh, uh, Batman, uh, Sh- uh, Batman of Shanghai is the one you were talking about. Fantastic. Yeah. I wish those animators would either do a series like that or even like Gotham by Gatlis- Gaslight where it's all Victorian and shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like that. And they do a good job animation-wise on those uh, Airbender cartoons, but after seeing Full Metal, it just Airbender looks childish to me. Right. Like, it's hard, folks. I saw Airbender, loved it, then watched Full Metal Brotherhood, and I'm like, I just can't. Even Legend of Korra, I'm like, I can't go back, man. Like, I, Brotherhood's so good. I'm like, ah, it's just like a little kitty cartoon out of me. So. But... Production-wise, it's, it's really good. They do a great job. And Zim. Love Zim. All right, Brandon, is there anything else? Nope. All right, that's it, folks. Brandon, where can people find you on the Internet? Uh, you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook at Lead Heavy. All right, and as always, folks, you can join me here at Sketchcraft. Leave your comments below. Share the videos. Share them. Please share them. They help. Tell your friends about it. See you all next time. Later. Bye. Bye.